Hello, welcome to the Monday, October 23rd, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Berlin, Germany. It's just about a year after we learned about the Mirai botnet. Well, it uh, turns out that we do have now sort of an evolution of this that moved beyond simple passwords. This one has been named so far IoT Reaper and it does, unlike Mirai, not rely on standard passwords, but use vulnerabilities predominantly in web applications in affected devices. At this point, it looks like it's going after a good number of routers like Netgear D-Link Linksys, also a couple of disk storage devices like Synology and a number of cameras. NetLab, the company that first reported about this, did count nine distinct vulnerabilities that are being exploited here. They're seeing about 10,000 infected systems checking into command control server. Now, this is still a very small number compared to even what's left over of Mirai. But regardless, this is likely going to be the next wave of IoT botnets that no longer use these very much overused at this point default passwords and try to find vulnerabilities that just haven't been patched yet. And if past experience is any guide, here, well, uh, patches are often not applied to these devices, so even older vulnerabilities will likely be quite useful. Checkpoint also reported about this botnet. They're actually estimating more than a million infected systems. NetLab's estimate may be a little bit uh, conservative in that it is really only based on some command control servers. On the other hand, it would be very plausible that there are multiple sub-botnets that exist here that aren't necessarily all tracked by the same command control infrastructure. And we do have another sighting of the Mac Proton malware. This time it came attached to a legitimate download of the Elmedia player or folks. So if you downloaded this software on October 19th from the official website or from any other website for that matter, you probably need to double check to make sure that you didn't get the additional payload. Ultima, the company behind these media players, did post a blog post with a couple of more details as a quick check to see if you're affected. They list four directories or files that you can check if they exist on your system, then you're likely affected. But removing these files will not remove the infection. Remember that Proton is a full remote control access kit, so no telling really what happened after the malware was installed, and they are correctly suggesting that you probably should rebuild your system. And Google is yet again expanding its bug bounty program. This time they're including popular Android apps from the Google Play Store. Currently only eight different apps are in scope. For example, popular apps like Dropbox and Snapchat. They do say that they will add additional apps to the list. I guess this is really just an initial test to see how well this works. Right now, rewards are limited to remote code execution flaws. This is not the first time that Google sort of does use its bug bounty program to find bugs in non-Google created applications. In the past, they have used this for a number of popular open source projects in order to give researchers an incentive to actually test and find vulnerabilities in these applications. And remember how last week, Adobe published a surprise update for Flash. At the time, Adobe was aware of some targeted attacks. Now, there is a blog post now by Proofpoint that talks a little bit more about some of the exploits that Proofpoint has seen since the patch was released. Proofpoint assigns uh, these exploit attempts to APT28, so one of the advanced persistent threat groups, and they're stating 
that the use of this exploit has accelerated since the patch was released. That of course makes sense. They're trying to infect as many systems as possible before the vulnerability is patched. Also, use of this particular exploit is less risky now, given that the vulnerability is known and has been addressed by the vendor. But at this point, exploitation still seems to be limited to more or less targeted attacks, but probably get ready for this vulnerability to be exploited by your average crimeware within the next few weeks. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.